why we have made an exception this year. Usually every year at the end of December, we announce what the next year will be called. You know, year of education, production, or whatever it is. But last month, six and a half months ahead of schedule, we announced to our people what the name of next year will be. So they can start from now to mobilize, including mobilizing overseas around the name. Because 1984 next year will be called the year of international year. Welcome everyone back to The Real News Network. I'm Jared Ball here in Baltimore. October 19th has again come and gone with not enough attention paid to an important and sad anniversary that it marks. On that date in 1983, the inspirational and brilliant revolutionary leader Maurice Bishop was assassinated in his home country of Grenada, a country that had become at the time seen as a threat to imperialism in the West and therefore a target of the Reagan administration. Joining us to talk briefly about his comrade is Bishop's former press secretary, veteran activist and journalist Don Rojas. Don, welcome to The Real News. Hey, thank you, Jared. Good to be with you, bro. So let's just start with the simple question of who was Maurice Bishop? Right. Uh, and if you can, tell us a little bit about the history of Grenada to fill people in sure, uh, and catch sure. us up on who this great man was. Sure. Well, Maurice Bishop was the leader of the People's Revolutionary Government and the head of the New Jewel Movement, which was the, the, the vanguard political party that uh, had carried out a, a struggle for a number of years against a, a dictatorship led by uh, Prime Minister Eric Gehry. That uh, party, in fact, overthrew the dictatorship on March the 13th, 1979, and with the support of the masses of the Grenadian people, the vast majority, uh, took power and, and, and held on to that power uh, for four and a half years, right up until, uh, as you just pointed out, uh, October 19th, 1983, when Maurice Bishop was killed by an internal coup d'etat led by a, a faction of, uh, of the military, of the, of the Grenadian military. Uh, he and a number of his uh, colleagues, uh, ministers of government, other leaders of the New Jewel movement were, were assassinated. Uh, and as a result of that, pretty much the revolution imploded. Uh, and um, so when the US, uh, uh, US uh, imperialism, uh, looking at what was happening in, inside of Grenada uh, and seizing on an opportunity to do exactly what they had been planning to do for right since 1981. In fact, they had military exercises that were carried out uh, in Vieques Island, just off of Puerto Rico, that were in fact a dress rehearsal for an invasion of Grenada whenever uh, the opportunity arose. And here, this opportunity did arise. And under the pretext of, uh, uh, of rescuing, quote unquote, uh, American medical students who were studying on the island at the time, uh, the U.S. under President Reagan's uh, uh, command uh, invaded Grenada and, uh, you know, crushed the revolution or what, what was left of the revolution after, after Bishop was killed and, uh, and occupied the country for well over a year subsequent to the invasion. Just thus bringing an end to an experiment, a noble experiment in self-determined uh, uh, political, social, and economic development led by the representatives of the Grenadian people in the form of the People's Revolutionary Government, an anti-imperialist revolution uh, that uh, set us set up upon a path of developing uh, an independent um, nation that was in fact uh, b had become a beacon for the entire Caribbean region. Uh, so it was uh, a great tragedy, not just for the Grenadian people, when, uh, the, in, the, when the revolution uh, was destroyed from within and then on top of that, uh, the U.S. invasion. But it was a tragedy for the entire region because Grenada had begun to, uh, to express itself as the vanguard force to, throughout the region and attract, attracted tremendous support from activists, uh, from progressive uh, 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 people, particularly young people from around the country, around the, the, the Caribbean region, who came to Grenada during those years, the four and a half years, or volunteered their time and their talents and their efforts, became involved themselves in the process of building a, an independent uh, a nation in, 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 in Grenada. And then many of them went back to, to, to pursue the struggles for independence in their own countries. Uh, so, uh, you know, it was a period 32 years ago, as, uh, as you said, you know, the anniversary just passed, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that opened up a whole new chapter in the history of the Caribbean region. 
Tell us a little bit about the New Jewel movement uh, and what its goals were, what it had already successfully implemented, what mm -hmm. made it uh, a threat to the West and mm -hmm. to imperialism. And we, we understand that, that Bishop was uh, openly Marxist uh, and mm -hmm. this, this caused problems, but mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about how he deployed his Marxism in that region yeah. and what, what was being accomplished. Well, he was a very realistic Marxist in mm -hmm. the sense that he understood the process of dialectical and historical materialism uh, and, that, and that building a revolution uh, uh, with the involvement of, of the masses of, of the people would, would take time. It was a protracted process. He also understood that that process would always be opposed by, by, uh, by U.S. imperialism, given the fact that this uh, experiment in, in, in an independent sovereign development was taking place in what the U.S. had always considered to be its backyard, you know, the Caribbean, Latin American region, given, too, the whole history of U.S imperialist interventions in our region, uh, going all the way back to the, to the Monroe Doctrine in the middle of the, of the, 18, of the 19th century, and um, the invasion and occupation of places like Haiti in, in 1915 for, for 20 years. The, the U.S. military occupied uh, the, the, the country of Haiti. Uh, they, they look at what uh, all the attempts to overthrow the, the Cuban Revolution that came to power in 1959. So, uh, this this particular region was very a very sensitive geo geostrategic region for the for the for, for U.S. imperialism, and um, and they vowed not to allow another Cuba to emerge and to consolidate in the, in that region. So from the very first day of the revolution's triumph, U.S. imperialism carried out a, a protracted process of destabilizing the revolution, economically, politically, diplomatically, etc to try to isolate the Caribbean, uh, try to isolate Grenada within the Caribbean region and beyond. Uh, they were particularly upset at the close ties that had begun to develop between Grenada and Cuba and the close personal relationship between Fidel Castro and Maurice Bishop. So just very lastly, you know, in the moment we're in now you, with, with uh, Black Lives Matter right. and, and police brutality here in the United States and really all around the world, actually, um, and a lot of young people joining movements for the first time and organization and activism for the first time, right. having your experience, uh, because not only with this, but you have a long experience with activist politics right. that uh, we would uh, love to have another conversation with you about right. at some point. What what would what does you know you mentioned that Bishop represented something not only for Grenada but for the Caribbean and for right. international struggle. What do you think we can learn or or could be passed on to to young folks today, given this experience and your experience or or, uh, or this uh, particulars around Bishop's assassination right. uh, and his struggle and the, the development of the revolution, the development of ideas or you know anything that that you think could inform or should inform. Uh, young people today from this particular experience? Well, there's so many, there's so many examples, uh, uh, there's so many parallels actually to, uh, to what's happening today with the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, the, uh, the, the resistance uh, to uh, police op uh, oppression, the resistance to, uh, to all, the form, all forms of violence in, inflicted on, uh, on the black community by structural racism and institutionalized racism. Uh, Bishop, uh, back in the day, 30, 30 years ago, struggled against the very same forces mm. uh, in, in the context of the Caribbean region. Also, you know, you're talking about um, b building a nation that, was, that had been for years a colony of Britain that had re re achieved its, its nominal independence, what we call flag right. independence, uh, but taking, taking uh, the, such a nation into a new stage of development that was, that was sovereign, that was independent. Uh, that was progressive. Um, those are lessons I think that the leaders of the of, of the movement today, the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, would uh, would do well to to study some of the lessons uh, coming out of that experience in Grenada. They are lessons uh, of how to how to struggle against um, you know the the various manifestations of an imperial of an empire. Right. I mean, the, the empire operating here in the United States and operating outside of the United States, operate, uh, very similar tactics. You know, should be studied, uh, and should and, and and there are lots of lessons that, that Bishop and, and his fellow revolutionaries have left behind for uh, for the, the contemporary generation of uh, of, uh, of freedom fighters and resistance fighters uh, to to incorporate and to uh, and to study and and to and to. Uh, 
build into their into their strategies as they move forward. So, I mean, don't forget there's a, <clears throat> there's a long history of relationship between influence of um, uh, freedom fighters in the United States like Malcolm sure. X and, and and Martin Luther King and Stokely Carmichael, uh, Kwame Ture and so on 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 the revolutionary movement in the Caribbean region. Uh, there, there's been historical ties uh, going all the way back to Marcus Garvey. So, you know, Marcus Garvey was from Jamaica. Marcus Garvey came came to the United States and built the largest um, mass movement of black people that, that, the world had, that the world had ever seen. That's right. right? Uh, uh, then you have people like C.L.R. James from Trinidad and Tobago, brilliant Marxist revolutionary intellectual who, who spent a lot of time uh, struggling and organizing workers, uh, black workers here in the United States, particularly in the, in the Detroit area. So there's a whole... And my uh, favorite, Claudia Jones. I want to I uh, shout her out real quick, right. too, coming from the Caribbean yeah. and doing the same kind of work. But yeah, anyway. Exactly. Just, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many mm -hmm. examples, mm -hmm. right? And, and so those synergies, those historical connections have always been there. True. And I'd love to see, um, you know, a revival of that. And in fact, that's, 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 that's going to be happening. Well, before he was killed, Maurice Bishop said that 1984 was to be the year of international labor. Yes. Let's hope that 2016 takes up that mantle as well. You know, let's, I, I would like to see that extended as well. Absolutely. Know? And I'd also like to see uh, the, the Black Lives Matter movement and the reparations movement uh, join forces uh, in this now and, in, and next year within the context of the UN's Decade for People of Africa right. Descent, which is, which is another topic hopefully we'll discuss at some point. No question. Right. Dom Rojas, thanks for joining us here at The My Real pleasure, News. My pleasure, Will. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us here at The Real News. And for all involved, again, I'm Jared Ball here in Baltimore saying, as Fred Hampton used to say, to you we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. So peace, everybody, and we'll catch you in the whirlwind. Sister, brothers, I think really it's time to close. Long live the leader right now.